today, independent Rhodesia is exactly two weeks old. Do you think the world at large has accepted the fait accompli? Well, this is quite a difficult question. I, I think that probably most of the other countries in the world would say to you that they would like to see this run for a little longer before accepting it. But I do believe that certain people who foolishly thought that this would fail are now having second thoughts and must have come to the conclusion that far from failing, this has been a greater success than even we ourselves thought. May I enlarge slightly here? The Organization of African Unity has suggested invading Rhodesia. In other words, they do not appear to have accepted the fact that Rhodesia is now an independent country. Do you think there is any likelihood of this happening? No. I must be honest and say that I don't treat this very seriously. And uh, moreover, I don't think there are many people in the world who treat this very seriously. The past two weeks must have been extremely worrying from your point of view. Which has been the most crucial period for Rhodesia? Well, I suppose uh, the most crucial period was the immediate period after our assumption of independence because of the uncertainty. <laughs> we were stepping into the unknown to a certain extent as far as outside world reaction was and what they were going to do. So it was the, the period immediately afterwards. Do you consider Mr. Wilson's sanctions against Rhodesia as appeasement measures to the United Nations and the Afro-Asian bloc? Well, I can tell you that a lot of the evidence put before me and the advice given to me is in the direction you have indicated, that Mr. Wilson has to do this in order to satisfy the United Nations and the Afro-Asian bloc. Indeed, I think I'm on record as having said previously, and this doesn't only apply to Mr. Wilson, his predecessors as well, that they conceded the justification for our independence, the case we had put forward. But they did say that what we had to consider was the rest of the world, world opinion. And uh, I don't think it is unfair or inaccurate of me to say that this is something that weighs very heavy with the British government. What is the purpose of recalling Parliament at this time? Really, this is in keeping with the laws of our country, which make it obligatory for us to recall Parliament after a state of emergency has been declared. And this is why we are recalling Parliament. Is that the only significance in the recall of Parliament? Yes. There will be no new legislation put before the House? No, we have no intention of producing new legislation, and uh, we did not all along. And had it not been for the emergency, then uh, Parliament would not have been recalled, I don't think.